Welcome, my friends, to a new episode of TOEFL ITB Insider. And in this episode, we're going to talk about um, a skill that we need for the structure and written expression section in the TOEFL ITB exam. We're talking today about a positives. But first, let's um, check what a positives are. Um, and actually, an a positive is a noun that comes after or before another noun and has the same meaning. So they either come after a noun or before it and they have the same meaning. Right. Now, the problem in the TOEFL form ITB exam that sometimes um, an appositive can be mistaken for a subject. And we say that an appositive cannot be a subject. But um, how do we know? Let's see this through some questions. And question number one, it says, um, as you see, it's a kind of an MCQ question. So um, now focus. The teacher was a Sunday painter and he'd gather his friends in the basement on weekend afternoons to work on their art. Okay, again, the teacher was a Sunday painter and he'd gather his friends in the basement on weekend afternoons to work on their art. Now, when you look at the teacher, you notice that there is a comma before it and a comma after it. This is a clear sign that the teacher is in a positive. And as we said, when we say that the teacher is in a positive, this means that it cannot be a subject, which means uh, that we need to check whether there is a subject in a sentence or not. So when we look at the sentence, we see that was a Sunday painter. So we've got the verb was. Now we've got a verb without a subject because was is a verb now. And we know that the teacher is not a subject because it's an appositive. Now, where is the subject? Let's look for it in the options. So we've got A, fortunately, that's not a subject, that's an adverb. Uh, at this time, this is a prepositional phrase. Um, so, and as we said in the previous episode, uh, a preposition followed by an object of the prepositions. No, that's not a subject. Um, her father, well, yeah, that's a noun. During that time, no, that's again a prepositional phrase. So the answer is C, her father. So her father, the teacher, was a Sunday painter and he'd gather his friends in the basement on weekend afternoons to work on the art. So that's the answer. Now, let's have a look at another MCQ. One of the guests made some assertions about the Lexington County School District 1. One of the guests made some assertions about the Lexington County School District 1. When we analyze it, we notice that one of the guests is preceded by a comma. And then we have made. So we've got made as a verb. Lovely, fair enough. So we've got made as a verb and we've got one of the guests as a subject, which means that this is a complete sentence. One of the guests, that's a subject. Made, that's a verb. So we are looking for an a positive before this comma. So option number A, Janet Fraser is. No, we can't take that um, uh, option because we said that a positives are nouns. But what we got, we, what we got here is a subject and verb. And someone might say, Shady, why we cannot use this subject and verb? Because you don't have a connector. You cannot say, Janet Fraser is, that's incomplete now, is what? And then you have one of the guests made and, and there, is, there isn't even a connector. So no, you can't. Now, Janet Fraser, that's a noun, good. And it means one of the guests as well. Fine, that is, the good, that is a good answer. So Janet Fraser, one of the guests, made some assertions about the Lexington County School District 1. Good, good, good. Now let's move to C. Janet Fraser is a good manager. Also, that's a bad option because yes, we've got a complete sentence, but 
what would I do with this complete sentence or complete clause without a connector? So I can't put them together. I can't put two sentences together without a connector. And then we have Janet Fraser Wars. It's the same like option A. First, it is incomplete. Second, it is a subject and a verb. And I don't need a subject and a verb. I need an appositive here because I already have a subject and a verb. Now let's move to analyzing sentences, whether they're right or wrong. And let's go to this sentence here. Let's read it together. The master of the one minute opening hold outdid himself this time by closing his first service game with an easy forehand volley winner at the 55 second mark. Now let's analyze whether this is correct or not. Now first we've got the master of the one minute opening hold and then we have a comma. Now this comma means what? It means that the master of the one minute opening hold is not a subject, it's an appositive. So this means that we need to look for a subject and a verb. Now we've got our did himself. Yeah, our did, that's a verb. But what about the subject? We don't see a subject. This means that we need a subject. So this sentence is incorrect because the master of the one minute opening hold cannot be a subject because of the comma. It's an appositive. Now, a correct sentence would be, Fedra, the master of the one minute opening hold, outdid himself this time by closing his first service game with an easy forehand volley winner at the 55 second mark. And I can say Fedra and put a comma. So that would make the master of the one minute open and hold, okay, and a positive right in the middle. And I've got Fedra as a subject. And this way it would be a correct sentence. Now let's move to another sentence. And it says, YouTube has yet to be a destination for TV content that the networks have been providing on their own. Now we need to analyze this one. So let's go. We've got YouTube and comma again. As long as we've got this comma, this means that YouTube is not a subject here. Then we need to look for a subject and a verb because this is the basic construction of an English sentence. So what do we have? We have has yet to be a destination. So we know that has is a verb. Now we're looking for a subject. So we would say that this sentence is incorrect because it lacks a subject. So the correct version um, would be one of these. First one, YouTube, comma, the king of user generated content, comma, has, has yet to be a destination for TV contents that the networks have been providing on their own. Now I turned YouTube into a subject and I added an appositive, which is the king of user generated content. Or I can say YouTube, comma, the king of user generated content has yet to be a destination for TV content that the networks have been providing on their own. So I kept YouTube as an appositive and I added a subject, which is the king of user generated content. Now, one last example here. Last week, last week, the one at GDNet attended an event on digital marketing arts in Cairo. Now let's check this sentence. So we have last week, we know that last week cannot be a subject, that's, that's a time phrase. The one at GDNet, oh wait a minute, the one at GDNet is between two commas, which makes it an appositive. And as we said before, an appositive cannot be a subject. So do we have a subject and a verb? Oh, we've got attended, that's a verb. Then we don't have a subject. So this sentence lacks a subject. So a correct version would be, last week, my team, the one at GDNet, attended an event on digital marketing arts in Cairo. So my friends, to wrap up, our positives are nouns that might come before another noun or after another noun. And they mean the same thing. However, they cannot be subjects. Uh, so be careful of the positives in the TOEFL ITP exam. 
Thank you very much, my friend, and see you in another episode of ITP Insider. Bye-bye.